Hey guys, what's up? This is Trinkill, and welcome back to part two of the firearm power scale for assault rifles. Uh, in part one, we covered fully automatic assault rifles, and I kind of explained the system a little bit, uh, talked to you guys about how I came up with the scores and what equations I use and formulas I use to calculate everything. And then I showed you guys how it was how it was weighted and calculated and explained everything. So if you missed that, go back and check out the first video here. Um, but in part two today, we're going to be talking about the semi-auto assault rifles and the three-round burst guns. Now, for those of you who don't want to go back and watch the first video right now, here's a reminder of all of the stats we're going to be looking at and how they're weighted into the final score. So the stats we're looking at are time to kill, uh, two types of recoil, dependability and net force, add time or the reload time of the weapon, uh, mag size, which is pretty obvious, the amount of bullets in a magazine, um, and the raise and drop times of the weapons. Uh, now the points and percentages are the weighting system. So uh, the higher the points or percentages, the more weight I think that stat deserves. Uh, so if you can see here, obviously time to kill being the most important stat on the list, and the raise and drop times obviously being the least important. Now before we get started, I wanted to make sure I took some time to answer a couple questions that came in on my last video. And the reason I want to answer them in the video is because I thought that they were both important enough to let everybody know so we were all on the same page when we were looking at these scores. Uh, the first question comes from El Capitano NL, and he asked, Am I confused or are you missing the range and damage drop off of, damage drop -off of the weapons? And the answer is no, you're not confused. I did leave that out on purpose, and I left that out because... One, all of the assault rifles except for one have a 37.5 meter damage drop off, meaning the gun's going to do max damage up to 37.5 meters. The exception to that rule is the M60. Uh, I'm sorry, the M16. And the M16 has a 50 meter damage, uh, max damage range. So the only reason that that would ever affect you, and I don't know how you would know this, but if you play above that 37.5 meter mark and below the 50 meter mark, that would be the only time that that would benefit you. Now, if you know for a fact you play in that range, then hey, the M16 is probably going to be um, higher on your priority list to use uh, if you can handle the three-shot burst. Um, so, you know, it's really situational, and that's why I left it out, because these scores and, and these uh, uh, stats are 100% true. And when I start throwing in situational stuff, it gets very opinionated, and I wanted to stay away from that as much as possible. Uh, the second question comes from, and I'm not sure how to pronounce this, I'm guessing GAPG or something like that. I'm going to put it right down there. Um, and he asked, are you also going to do the add-ons for the guns and the perks and how they affect the gun? And by add-ons, he means attachments. And by perks, I'm assuming he means the gun and the player. And the answer is yes, but the, the answer is also no, because I'm not going to include it in the scores. Uh, because again, it's situational. So... You know, you may have one person who likes dual mags versus one person who likes extended mags, and that's going to change the score completely, and I don't think anybody has time to watch hundreds of videos with every possible gun, perk, and uh, attachment combination. So, yes, I will be doing that and talking about the attachments a little more in depth, uh, but no, it will not be linked to the scoring system. All right, so uh, now that we got that out of the way, let's jump right into the scores. Uh, the first stat, just like last time, is time to kill. And I want you to notice one thing as we look at this first picture. The semi-automatic guns and the three-round burst guns are scored completely separately. So basically what you're looking at is the fact that the M14 and the FAL are only scored against each other. They are not compared to the G11 or the M16 at all. And same for the three-round burst guns. The G11 and M16 are scored against each other and are not scored in any way against the semi-automatic guns. I can't stress that enough. And the reason I did that is because fully automatic guns and semi-automatic guns and three-round burst guns all play very differently. Now, the only thing you're really going to notice about this picture is that the M16 is the one gun that stands behind the others. Um, it's got a slightly slower time to kill, and that's just because the G11 has a faster fire rate uh, than the M16. Other than that, there's not a lot of differences on this page. Uh, they all kill really quickly, actually. So on to a slightly more interesting statistic, uh, dependability. Uh, the first thing you're probably going to notice if you watch my last video is that I don't have the arrows uh, showing which direction the gun's going to kick in this one. And the reason I included those last time is because I really wanted to illustrate that the Commando, the AK-47, and the AUG all had the same recoil table, while the, while the FAL, or I'm sorry, while the FAMAS, the Enfield, and the Galil all had the same recoil table. It's not like that in this case. Uh, looking at the semi-auto guns first, the M14 is slightly more dependable, 
uh, than the FAL, and the G11 is slightly more dependable than the M16. But beyond that point, the M14 and the M16 basically shoot straight up on average, and the G11 shoots up and to the right, while the FAL is the only assault rifle that shoots up and to the left. And <clears throat> the reason I didn't include the arrows in this is because in most cases, you're shooting the semi-auto gun slow enough and three-round bursts slow enough to where they've got time to recenter themselves, usually. Now, there are going to be times where you're using the semi-auto and you're, you know, pumping it like a pistol real quick and, uh, you know, it, it strays off a little bit. But for the most part, I would say, and I don't use some of these guns, so I can't be 100% uh, accurate in this assumption, but for the most time, especially with the three-round burst guns, you're shooting it at such a speed where it recenters it itself between bursts. Um, so... You know, with the uh, the M14 and the G11 sticking out on top, I think you're going to be pretty uh, pretty surprised to see the M14 stays on top uh, for most of the stats. So uh, let's move on to the next recoil stat here, uh, net force. And the first thing you're going to notice is that there's a much bigger discrepancy in the scores from dependability. And this is exactly why I weighted this at only 10 points instead of 20 for the total recoil score, is that it's not really, like I said, 100% accurate. So... Basically, looking at this, the foul kicks has more chances to kick in random directions than the M14 does. The G11 has more chances to kick in random directions than the M16 does. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to. Like I said, you're usually shooting these at such a speed where the recoil is not going to be um, really all that big of a deal, especially the three-round burst guns. So, even though the G11 scored much lower than the M16 did, it's not really indicative to how the gun's going to play because you're shooting at such a speed where it doesn't matter. So for the semi-auto assault rifles and the three-round burst guns, um, I don't think I'd put a lot of thought into this stat uh, simply because the nature of these guns, it just, I don't want to say it makes recoil irrelevant because it's surely not the case, especially with the semi-auto guns, but it definitely makes it less important of a stat than say like an SMG or something like that. So moving on to add time or reload time. Uh, this is where the video really starts to pick up speed because the rest of the stats are really quick and easy to talk about. Um, but if you notice the semi-automatic weapons come in very close together. They're only separated by 0.1 seconds. The M14 barely edges out the foul. Um, but if you look at the three round burst guns, the M16 blows the G11 out of the water as far as reload time is concerned. You're when you're 0.65 seconds faster than another gun, that's a pretty big difference. Um, you're talking over a half second. That's a pretty big deal. And actually, the M16 is the fastest assault rifle uh, reload time in the game, and the G11 has the second slowest. So that's where the M16 makes up a lot of its points, um, where the G11 is better in more categories. But this is a, it's a pretty big deal there. Now, mag size, on the other hand, bam, the G11 strikes back. 18 more bullets than the M16. Um, it doesn't sound like a pretty big deal, but you got to understand that these shoot three bullets a piece. So while the M16, you can only get 10 shots out of that clip before you have to reload, the G11, you can get 16 shots out of a clip. So you can, I mean, when you're shooting the G11, it almost feels like you can burst indefinitely. It's, it's crazy to shoot. Um, so while it reloads slower, you should have to reload less often. Now, Dividing those by three each, you've got 10 bullets in the M16, 16 bullets in the G11. Compare that to the semi-auto guns that have 20 bullets each. So uh, the semi-auto guns do have their place, um, and you can see they both have 20 bullets, so their score's completely dead even. And the last stats we're looking at are raise and drop times, and I'm not going to talk about these a lot. You can take a look at them and, and figure out which gun works best for you. Understand that this is only like 5 or 10% of the score and should only really account for 5 or 10% of your decision when you're picking a gun, if that. Uh, the only time raise and drop time really comes into play is when you have something like a sniper rifle, like the WA-2000, I think, takes a full second to, to drop, and something like the Strela, which takes a full second to raise. So when you got two-second switch times, that's a pretty big deal. But otherwise, you know, especially if you're using a pistol, your switch times are only 0.25 seconds anyway, so uh, this really doesn't matter all that much. But what does matter is the final score. So let's look at semi-auto guns first. <laughs> this just cracks me up. The M14 is better than the FAL in every category except for drop time. I mean, Treyarch, are you kidding me? Drop time? You made the FAL better in one category by 0.1 seconds and you made it drop time? I just don't get that. The M14 you get like in the mid-teens and the FAL you don't get to the late 20s, early 30s. 
and you made the M14 better in every possible way. Not to mention the FAL has the worst hip spread of any assault rifle and the M14 has a better multiplier at 1.5 instead of 1.4 and that includes the neck which the other guns don't. I just, I can't grasp that. That doesn't make any sense to me. But if you're going to be using a semi-automatic weapon, do not use the FAL. Use the M14 every time, hands down. Um, and when it comes to the three round burst guns, this is another debacle I think. You're talking about a difference between 0.39 points. But you're also looking at two guns. One is the very first assault rifle that you have. The other is the very last assault rifle you get. And they're only that different in points. And that's not to, that's not to include the notes over off to the right. The G11 only has scopes, which makes it worse in my opinion. Okay, great, you gave it an SMG hip spread. It's got a little tighter hip spread, but who's going to be hip spreading a three-round burst gun? That doesn't make any sense. And the M16 has a max damage up to 50 meters versus all of the other assault rifles having a max damage at 37.5. Those are way too closely related to be at opposite ends of when you get them. Level 1 versus level 44, I think, is when you unlock it. So... I just don't understand how they could have made that big of a difference. But anyway, there's the stats. The M14 obviously beats the foul. The G11 and the M16 are basically a toss-up. If you can handle the fact that you don't get attachments, um, I say go with the G11. If you play from a little further away, then you know your your average 37 and a half meters. Again, I don't know how you'd calculate that, uh, but you may find the M16 a little better for you. I don't know. Maybe you like to play up close and you'd want to hip spread a three-round burst gun. By all means, if you do that, pick the G11, but I think you'd rather go with a submachine gun or a shotgun if you're going to be doing that. So anyway, there's the scores for the uh, semi-auto and three-round burst guns. This concludes the assault rifles. The next video I'm going to do is SMGs, and uh, I hope you guys learned a lot here. I know I did when I was putting these together. Um, I, I still cannot believe that the M14 is so much better than the FAL, but I really appreciate you guys stopping and hanging out with me, and I uh, hope you guys stick around for the SMG scores. Thanks, guys. Bye.